seeing this. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I hope you are well. Uh, last community call of Argos for this year, because we are having more uh, in 2023. And as the um, as the agenda uh, in our um, invitation uh, mentioned, we are going to talk about two new features that we are launching in this in the latest release that will be taking place uh, right after we are back from Christmas, so in January. And those features are uh, the possibility to deposit your DMP, to, to push your DMP and expose it in more than one repositories. So one is this, and the other one is the possibility to um, create a template that supports a table uh, that is machine actionable. So maybe you want to create a table to list things. Um, that is now possible to do it, and I will show you uh, how. Um, let me share my screen. Um, that's the one. Okay, let me do this. Okay. So let me start by showing you the feature with the table. And this feature can be used as the administrators want, uh, depending on how the information that they want to add in the template, they would like to be you know, visible uh, on the export. And let me minimize this to start uh, showing you how to do that. So if you're an admin in Argos, you know that you go to dataset templates to create your own template and your own structure with your own questions, the rules, uh, and uh, all the things that uh, will, um, will make your DMP. Um, so let me minimize it more. Let me create my dataset template and let's now do a test for table. Let's say that we want to create a table where we list all the um, or, or basic components, basic information for data sets that we want to have in a collection of data sets. Um, So I will quickly create a chapter for table. Okay. To make data sets in a table. Okay. And then I click to add the question as I would normally do. Uh, nothing has changed, as you, can see, and as you can see here. I can add um, my the name of the question. I can give a description. And I can select the types that I want. So first, I need to know how I want to what I want to include in this table, right? Uh, so what I want to include in terms of content. Let's say that my table, I would like it to have, a, uh, to, to give information about the title of the data set, the vocabularies or metadata that have been used in, uh, for, the data, uh, for this data set, the PID of the data set, a license of the data set and the repository of the data set, right? So I have five key uh, things that I want to, um, to address. Uh, I will start by creating them separately. So I will start by adding uh, a free text because this is the field that the researchers will need to add their uh, the name for this um, for this for each data set. So 
data set, right? Then I can add more below. Let's say that I want to add next the metadata of data set. And here I chose the API so that I infer this information from the um, trusted source. Um, the one that we use for metadata, for example, is the um, RDA and University of Bath directory of metadata standards. Then I can add another input to include the PIDs, maybe uh, a select to provide options to provide options for uh, maybe a DOI. Uh, um, and um, I don't know, Earl maybe. And I can see below how this is, this is done, right? Uh, and let's make it multiple, maybe more PIDs uh, are used, maybe let's do this multiple as well, so they have the possibility to add more things, uh, for provide more inputs, and then add one more for the license from the APIs again, uh, the licenses. right from the API and then um, let's say that this is more uh, let's say that I want um, the data repository let's say repository of data set. okay so this is how it would look until today, you have all these different inputs um, added next to, uh, right below um, one to another, uh, making up one question. So this is one question with multiple inputs. And now if I want to change it and view it as a, um, as a table, I click the multiplicity here. I go up where the multiplicity is. I can specify how many times I want, how many times I want this set of inputs to be visible for people to um, to answer. So let's say I want them, I want ten times, and I select view inputs in table and now with this the 10 times are become rows so that means that I, I will now view what I did what I created in a table which supports uh, the uh, the addi addition of uh, input for 10 rows and if I go back I see how this is done I see that there's one, two, three, four, five uh, rows, uh, five, sorry, columns, and I can add up to 10 rows. I could, uh, you know, I could uh, have picked another, um, an, another uh, number, but let's say 10 for now. Okay, and then I save it. Uh, before I save it, let's see how this um, is machine actionable. It is machine actionable because, because for the name of the data set, I can select this field that is um, expected from the RDA standard uh, to be found in the JSON export. So name of the data set will be data set title. Metadata will be, let me see where the metadata is. So here we don't have the description of the data. 
uh, we have uh, the identifier type. Then for, um, yes, so as you can see, this is how we do it for every input. So for every input, we go and uh, map it to the RDA standard and then we save it. And if I go back to Argos as a user now, not as an admin, I can start my DMP. I can start creating DMP. So let me hide video panel. No. Hide building. Start my new DMP. Start the wizard. Quickly create a DMP. Save. Let's do it manually. Now, if I go here, this is the question that I have created and I can add the title. Choose the metadata, add the PID for this data set. Choose the license, I don't know, maybe Creative Commons. And choose a repository where this data set will be hosted. Save, and I can add more. So uh, as I told you, we are we, we haven't launched it. We are still finalizing things. So for example, here you cannot view the input from the APIs, but we you can see that in the export. So before it's released, uh, we're finalizing this. Here you will be able to view also uh, whatever comes from the APIs. And similarly, I can add the title of second data set, add the metadata to it, and provide a PID and so on. And then I can save it. I can go and check what I have just created and I can finalize it. Yes, I will finalize it. And then if I export it, for example, in PDF, can you still view, uh, do, you, do you view the PDF now? Yes, we can see. You can see the PDF, perfect. So you can see uh, that it has the information that I um, selected in this table, right? Oops, let me go back. Yes, I want this one. Okay. And so I could again choose any other export and see um, this information like this um, yes I think before I, before I show you the next I would like to know your views and uh, how you find it maybe you want something to change we have time before that the release so we can change it uh, if something uh, is not very, you feel that it would, won't be very uh, useful um, how, of how we have it today. Uh, let me see, do we have any questions regarding the table? Please feel free to open your mics. We, we have a question in our uh, document. From Andrea. Not... Yes, yeah. yeah, so from Andrea, we have um, a comment on how to, to create. 
Yes, you have to have admin roles to create a template. Yes. And in our Google Doc meeting, with in our Google. we also have a question. Uh, once the table rows are filled in, can can we use the fields on one column as a scroll down menu? Suppose I have a, an answer that applies to a few data sets, and it will will be nice to choose which ones via the scroll down menu. So let me see. Uh, I don't find this in the minutes. Where is this question? It, it's below the, the table. Ah, once it, okay. Once the table rows are filled in, can we use the filled someone from? Um, So you want to be able, like you do in, um, so as you do in the, the, the spreadsheet where you copy and click everything, like, like scroll through the whole column, for example, and paste it, right? Is this the, uh, the action? Uh, hello, that is me. Uh, I, I, um, I have this question. So suppose you have data set one B and C, and you have all your questions, then the follow-up questions in the question in the, your DMP, and uh, say question X applies to data set uh, one and B. So it would be nice to be able to say to which data set this answer uh, is relevant. And then you would be able to have a nice little scroll down menu with say the column name, the column name of the data set. And you could just click and say, oh, it applies here and here. That is the question. I'm saying this because this is something. Um, pardon me. Sorry, uh, someone is not muted maybe. Uh, this is a question and a feature uh, uh, which is discussed in DSW, for example, as well. Mm. But from my perspective, it would be a, a very nice feature. And from the way you show the mapping between uh, RDA with the RDA common standard. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, fields, I think. I have in my, yes. you can do it. I have the feeling that technologically speaking, you, it should be a, like, a possible in your case. But then I find this extremely in, interesting as a feature, but maybe not everyone. No, no, no it is, but it's something that we hadn't like, um, yeah, we have, we, we didn't think when we designed this table, uh, but, I will pass it over to, to the development team and I can let you know next time um, what may, might be the challenges uh, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, for but again, maybe the community might want to say if it's something they would like to see, et cetera. But again, from your mapping with, for example, the RDA common standard, I have the feeling it's feasible, but then that's me. Thank you. Very nice. Thank very, you. Thank very, you so much. Very nice. Thank you. Yes, does anyone uh, support um, this um, possible new feature? We have uh, Rory with uh, their hand raises. Yes, hi. I, I have, I, well, I'm, I have another question, so I don't want to interrupt the the, the feedback on that one, but if there's if there's nothing else, yeah, okay. So yeah, my question is, yeah, it looks really great about the about the PIDs. So you got a, I see you've got a, you can add a PID. Could you talk a little bit more about what that means? What what PIDs are available? How does it work? Um, because the PID needs to be minted and all those things. So how does how does the PID aspect of this uh, work? Ah, uh, so you, so, so I just created it like freehand. I didn't use any 
API, for example, for this or any um, source uh, to infer information from. Uh, so I, for this particular example, I did it like freehand. So using the multiple choice um, uh, field um, to create it. But uh, there are many ways that we use PIDs, for example, uh, in Argos. And um, well, <laughs> which one should I, um, which one should I touch upon? Do you have a specific? Well, my question um, is: so if you're if you're okay if you're a if you go if so you you get this field you get this option right you see PIDs and you can you can put something in, but what yes. happens when you put it in? Does that it's not it won't just if if I put in a DOI it's not going to ma it won't magically produce a DOI for me I assume so how does how does that how does it work? Mm, no 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 so uh, let me where was the export. Do you still see the export now? So no. Do you still see my screen? No, we no. are seeing your uh, browser. Okay. Um, let me open it here. No, you do you see, see it now? Yes, yes. The PDF. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, here, for example, so, so this was a free text field. Everyone can add what they want. Um, metadata, we get, we infer the information from the directory of metadata standards. PID, I, I did it to uh, give the possibility to add uh, this as an answer uh, by a selection, a, a pre-selection of uh, uh, answers. License, this was from the, again, the API, and uh, I chose Creative Commons 4, uh, so Creative CC BY, and uh, repository I chose for the one, and the maps for the other one, I didn't uh, add anything. Uh, so I had this repository. The, when I use an API to get information. So for the case of metadata, license and repository, there are different things that are shown in the export and in the JSON, uh, according to what is expected and how I have formulated this, uh, this template. So that means that although here you might be able to suggest the title of the metadata, at um, in, in the JSON, you should be able to view uh, more things um, that are related to the metadata, like the um, uh, identifier, if it's any, like a language, if it's available, and so on. Uh, in the same way, if we had uh, a PID API, we could get the here the I guess the title of the system uh, that we want to show here and then uh, decide what information we want to cover in the JSON uh, uh, export according to the metadata uh, according to the standard with the MPCOM standard uh, but another way that we use the PIDs for example is to infer information in the template, uh, but this is different from how we use it here. Because um, to be able to infer like metadata uh, that are relevant to uh, a DOI, for example, a, DOI, a record with a DOI, uh, that, that's a different feature, the pre-filling feature that we have and this is let me show it maybe quickly uh let me add a data set in the system no i have to define what it is let me quickly do that starting a dmp very quickly Um, P 
prefill. So when I click prefill, I search uh, data set that I want to, that I have deposit somewhere, right? Let's say that this is the one that I want. I click next. Uh, and sorry, I could search with the DOI that I didn't show you, but I, I can search with the DOI and then whatever uh, is here is in the metadata record uh, appears here, um, as you can see, pre-filled uh, in my DMP. So this is another use. I think this is the one that is closer to your question, Rory. Yeah. So I, I don't want to take up too much time. I, I, I've actually, um, I, I, along with some other people, we've just put in a, we have a, a new um, RDA interest group called Working with PIDs and Tools. So I'm quite interested in this whole issue of how do you incorporate PIDs into tools? And it's, it's very complex as this discussion is, is uh, kind of demonstrating. So yeah, my, under, my question, I, I, what I thought you were trying to show was associating a particular PID with a particular data set. But no, no, no. That's not I the was case. Just, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. I was just um, uh, communicating the new feature that we're going to launch, and this is the table view um, that we will be offering uh, from and, January. And that and and their table tells you what what type of PID it, it is, not not the actual PID. Is like a DOI, for example. Is that right? Y yes, unless you define it to be otherwise. So in my particular scenario, I didn't want that. But you may configure a, an API that supports something else, uh -huh. and you can use it here, also in the table, um, in another way. There are infinite ways that you can use um, you know, all the different inputs and fields that we have in, uh, that we provide. So it's basically up to the admin to use it. Okay. All right, great. Oh, Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank, thanks, Ellie. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or uh, feedback for this feature? I see uh, a lot of thumbs up. So that's good. Regarding the ideas, we have a question from uh, Joaquim. Um, I, I assume PIDs still have to be minted outside Argos, example via data, data site or uh, mining facility, uh, right? Correct. So they are minted uh, from a repository infrastructure. Uh, if there is um, you know, if, if there's the case, for us, it is the case. Uh, and for other Argos instances, uh, it's also the case. But um, we are also, we, we, we are having a call uh, again next year with DataSide. And so we're planning this to see how this can be done, uh, maybe without um, the assistance of the repository. So we were contacted basically by DataSide to, to, to check um, another way uh, of minting the OIs. We also have a, a question from uh, Roberta asking yes. about uh, how can create a DMP a template. A template. A DMP ah. or, or a data set template. I wish I had the time to show you now, but this is not the, um, the topic of today's uh, community call. But maybe that's that's a good thing to to add maybe in the next uh, admin demo. Maybe we can have another administrator demo next year, uh, either January or February. Um, if that is interesting to you, I can make it happen to see how you do it. But uh, very briefly, you have to have admin rights. We provide you with those rights, and then you go then you will be able to view all those things that you do not see as a simple user. Uh, and data set templates is the one that you want to use to create your data set template. Um, very briefly, this is how it's done. Um, but I know that you to have an admin demo probably next uh, January or February. Any other question?
Okay, I would like to get admin rights to. Okay, oh, whoever wants to get admin admin rights, please uh, uh, let's contact me, or uh, we can leave your email in the um, collaborative document so that uh, I contact you. Okay. Um, do we have other questions for this? Okay. If not, then I will move to uh, this uh, the other new feature, <laughs> to, to the possibility to be able to select the repository that you want to publish your DMP and then make all the links with the, the outputs inside it and so on. Um, and we have expanded this feature to include um, to include more repositories. So we are currently working in a, in a national use case where we support a, two universities to create their DMPs with Argos. And the two universities have two different um, repositories, right? Where they add their publications and their research outputs. So although both repositories uh, have the same software, so they're both this space, um, they don't share the same uh, storage. So the researchers should be able to select which one they want to send the DMP to. Um, and we have created a plugin for this to support it. Um, I will show you where this can be found in the code if you want to have a look uh, in a minute after I show you how this works. And well, yeah, let me not say more things. Let me just show you how it works. So let me say, well, let's say that I started the MP. The MP um, to uh, the MP deposit. Uh, let's see. I select the template. And then let's just provide some answer to that. Okay, and then I save it. I can now go and view my PID when I'm ready, finalize it, select the data sets that I want to finalize. In this case, I have only one, so I want to finalize only this one. And now I can deposit. Now, instead of going uh, giving me the possibility to use only Zenodo, for example. Now I have the possibility to use Dataverse uh, or DSpace. So in this test that we're showing you today here, it's, for example, Dataverse. So let me select Dataverse, for example, since I have showed you how um, Zenodo works in the previous demo. Again, similarly, automatically, we have the creation of the metadata record on Dataverse. And I can view it. Do you see the Dataverse now? Yes, yes. Ah, perfect. And then I can view it. I mean, I haven't added many things, so this is why it's very minimum the information that it has. And then, Okay, and then if I go back uh, and I want to deposit again, for example, now the Dataverse is not an option, there's another is an option. So I can do both, uh, I, I can push to both repositories, but I'm, of course this is not something that is very common or I don't foresee that this will be done, but yeah. So, and here you can view uh, the DOI and access it and so on. Um, 
Yes, and I promised to show you where this is in the code. And it is here, the plugin is here. Uh, uh, where is it, where is it? Oops, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I cannot find the, what happened? I cannot find the Zoom. Maybe, can you please add something? Okay, in the chat, okay. In the chat. It disappeared from my, from my laptop. If you, you, you can try the pressing uh, yes, yes, the uh, alt, alt, alt type yes. in, in the keyboard to find the zoom. Oh, come on. Oh, I cannot find it. Maybe cycle through all your windows. Uh, maybe I, I, I will stop your sharing screen and you will yes. be able to see and then you can start sharing again. This is the Christmas. Uh, oh, yes, I see. I thought that was someone telling us to stop uh, working and go to cool, to have Christmas holidays. <laughs> but it's, yeah, okay, now I say thank you, Andre, thank you. So this solved things. Um, yeah, but now I cannot exit. <laughs> now I'm stuck in here. Let me do the search screen again. No, before I do, let me add in the chat. Here. This is where you can find in the code. And now I can share my screen again. And you see, yes, where this is. Um, was here. So here it is with documentation so that you can use if you want. Do we have uh, questions? For the deposit? How do you find the, the feature? Thank you, Paul. Would you like something to change? And in what direction? Yes, I agree. It's a great push for researchers to make the DNP public. Yes, and we are, you know, we are working also, uh, since, you, since you mentioned it, Julia, uh, we are now merging parts of our workflow to do exactly what you say, to close the DMP life cycle and push for um, publishing the DMP so that they become fair objects as well, um, with all the links to other uh, tools and outputs. So we are doing that and we, we will have more to say in 2023, early 2023. Colette, um, it depends uh, if, if, if the admins um, or if people that deploy Argos are doing it themselves, we support them. We can support them uh, if they have questions and uh, at least in the long term. And in the long term, I don't know what you mean. 
for the plugin in the long term? Do you mean no. the Argus in the long term? No, what I mean is when I talk about an admin, it's not the sysadmin I'm talking about, it's the admin, the people who have admin rights in Argos when they do the uh, DMPs, etc. That means something that like um, a skeleton plug plugin where you put uh, the proper information and then, oops, you have created a new plugin. That's what I meant. Not from the sysadmin perspective, but from the, if you want data oh, okay. steward admin. Okay, I'm I see. Sure if it's feasible, I was just thinking about that. Okay, well, that's a, a good approach, <laughs> a good perspective. Um, but it's true that what I, that those plugins are meant for the sysadmin, so the people that uh, are working to on the platform. Uh, to, to deploy things and uh, configure things. Okay. Any other question or idea based on what you saw? Or any, um, I don't know, comments? By using Argos, what would you like to change? What disturbs you, for example? And we could um, simplify it and make it better. Because the table you came from your, um, your input as well. Many things actually <laughs> came from uh, your requests. Then if we don't have more questions, um, can I ask, um, thank you, bye, bye, Paulette. Um, can I ask, um, what would you like where would you like to concentrate uh, in our next community call? Because we have ideas, of course, that maybe you want something um, more urgently that we need to, to show to you. I added the admin demo. I think I will stick to the admin demo. Then. Let, let's let's say that um, either January or February we'll have a admin demo. Um, good. Um, we have a, a suggestion in the chat. Yes, I think table is helping in this, but about making conditional questions. Um, Ingmar's, you mean? what about um, the conditionality how to do it practically yes so again there are many ways that you can use the table maybe having conditional questions with that um, is difficult but i think from what i've tested uh, it's feasible to attach, uh, let's say, when someone answers um, one cell in the table to be uh, redirected to, I don't know, question that is below the whole set of, um, of uh, inputs of the table. Yes, uh, I wanted to it was more about that uh, for example when you have yes or no question and you have several inputs and uh, if you put condition yes and uh, this input then it shows only first input and uh, i don't know if uh, and if no then uh, i mean uh, 
maybe I haven't understood it correctly how to make it, but I would like to, if I put yes, then uh, you can get all the inputs in the same question, or uh, if no, then none of these inputs, something like that. Mm. Ah, I see what you mean. Yeah. So you have a question, yes or no, let's say, and then depending on if you answer yes, for example, then the table opens, right? Or no? Also, also that would be yes. That, would that, be that, nice. that 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 is yes. That is how uh, it happens today. But you say something else. So you say that when I click yes or in yes, everything will open. In no, I won't two things to open from the yeah, table. Yeah, for example, something like that as well. Yeah. Yes, then what you need is to create another, so to clone what, what the whole template is mm -hmm. and delete what you don't need yeah. and, and attach this to, to make this conditional to the no. Yeah, like the next question. Uh, yes, so the one... Okay, I was doing it. something like that, yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe it's possible to do it with the same... In, in, with the inputs in the same question. Yeah. Okay. Ah, with the inputs in the same question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, oh, okay, that's a good one. Um, so I have conditionals in the same inputs. Yes, um, let me get back to you on that. Let's okay. see how it works now. Uh, and if we have time to tweak it to support it, and I will follow up with you uh, in an email about this. Yes, thank you. Okay, Mars. Anything else? Oops. If not, uh, in the background, I hear bells ringing. <laughs> so it's Christmas very soon. So I wish you all a Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah. Uh, it depends. Uh, and generally, please like have uh, a good rest and enjoy uh, your time uh, offline and uh, yeah i wish you all the best and we'll see you very soon uh, next year thank you everyone bye